guys what's up so alternator went bad finally so this is a 3g uh, 130 amp alternator i got from the uh, junkyard a couple of years ago or a year ago i can't remember but uh got off a of mid 90s uh taurus ford taurus and i bought two of them saw my other videos so um all right there they are so i got a full rebuild kit for this thing this time Instead of just replacing the brushes and stuff, I'm actually going to take this thing apart and uh, clean it with some electrical cleaner and put new bearings in it, new brushes, new module, and a new slip ring. I'll show you that, but I'll show you that kit real fast I got. Alright, so this is the rebuild kit. 30 bucks on eBay. I'll put a link where you can get it. Amazon didn't, the one at Amazon didn't have, didn't have the uh, full rebuild. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So that's the uh, 3G module. Cool, I'm gonna get a little pen there to keep the brushes. Those are the brushes. And this, where did it come from? It came from a uh, LA, LA Electrical. Put a link where you can get it. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. The most important thing for me is, I can tell because I, the last time I replaced the brushes, I could tell my slip ring was uh, wearing out. So the slip ring is actually where the brushes actually touch the motor. So there was a big groove in this, and I'll show you that when I get it off. There's a big groove I worn in this thing. So I'm going to take this whole thing apart, put new bearings in it, and new slip ring, and all this stuff. Alright. So I'm going to first take it off. That should be pretty basic. Not going to film that, but uh, come back with the alternator. Alright, so I have it taken off, and uh, this is actually what they, is what they call a one-wire alternator. Well, not really one-wire, but... So I have the, uh, this is the lead that goes back to my uh, mega fuse. That actually provides the charging voltage that goes back to the battery. And this is actually a 12 volt key switch. And just wraps up in there and I have it wrapped like that. Comes like that. So, um, I gotta get all this wiring off, module off, and um, gotta think of this thing separated. Alright, so this actually just, I don't know if this broke off when I took it off hard, but um, yeah, this thing actually was charging for a while. I'd replace the brushes. That's what it's supposed to look like, and then it broke off right there. But yeah, it, it stopped charging, so... Don't know if that's the reason why or what, but... Um, as you can see, you see those heavy-duty grooves in there? That's supposed to look like that. So, this thing definitely has a lot of miles on it, so that's actually what I'm going to repair. So I gotta take this whole thing apart, so... Um, yeah, I just bought these about a week ago. So... All right. All right. So before I start taking this part, I got to take off the uh, pulley here. But I got all the electronics off, so I can separate it. And I'll show you this motor cleaner I got too. It's uh, made by CRC. All right. So eight millimeter. Take these three bolts off. All right. Yeah, they're pretty dirty in there. Look at that. All right. Got a lot of metal there. But yeah, look at that. Look how, look how bad that is right there. The grooves. All right, yeah, take a look at that. A lot of corrosion, but that's not be all. I'm going to sand all that stuff off. Or I'm going to actually take my wire brush to it and clean it all up. And probably sand this too or get my wire brush to it. And this should just come separate. Like that. Careful, I just want to make sure I don't mess up any of these wires right here. If you mess up one of these wires right here, it's game over. Alright, so I'm going to get my electrical cleaner. I'll show you that real fast. It's bearing up. Alright, all this stuff I'm going to clean up real fast. So I just picked this up at O'Reilly. So it's actually for cleaning motors and stuff. Look at that. Crazy. Alright, so now I gotta remove this bearing to uh, get the slip ring off here. So, a couple different ways you could do that. You could maybe use a two jaw if you had a two jaw. This is actually a power steering uh, pulley puller. 
but I can also use like a bearing press too, but try this because most people probably wouldn't have this, so all right. Um, all right, so I'm going to heat up my soldering iron here and I'm going to try to get these off. So once I heat up the uh, soldering iron, I'm going to like this. I'm going to just push these off here. Like this might be difficult to uh, get hot enough to undo here, but uh, like I said, just the whole time I'm just looking for problems here. I mean, I haven't seen any obvious problems yet, but... Once I get those unsoldered, then I'm going to just pop this up. Alright, well that's heating up and getting ready to go. I'm going to take off this bearing plate here. 8mm. Right. Right, even though I have a bearing press, sometimes it's just a headache to set it up. So, I'm just going to use a socket to pound up the bearing. Alright, this should come back in pretty easy. You can either use this, uh, got this over at Harbor Freight. It's designed for pressing in bearings and uh, seals. Like this, this should go in pretty, pretty, pretty simple. As long as it gets in straight. See, yeah, this one kind of went in crooked, so let me get my bigger one here. Alright, so a couple of taps got it in. I had to put the bigger one on there because I got the bearing in kind of crooked a little bit. So it kind of bound up, so all I had to do is hit it at an angle and get it back in there. A couple pounds in. Now I can put this back in. Clean up these things here a little bit. I actually, I use a wire brush with my uh, air uh, die grinder. And those are 8 millimeters. And that part's done. All right, next part. So I gotta work on the uh, suppering. Okay, so I'm gonna use my soldering iron. I'm gonna heat this up. Oh, I put my hand there, sorry. This, this might or might not work just because the soldering iron is not big enough to heat this much. This, is, this whole thing acts like a conductor and it's gonna suck away the heat, so. This might or might not work, so this might take a bit. This actually came up pretty easy. Actually, uh, I, the trick was for me to put this hard iron down here at the bottom. And keep going. Alright. Alright, so the trick was to get under the screwdriver under there. So I'm going to keep on going to bigger and bigger screwdriver. And then eventually I'm just going to grab this two screwdrivers and push down on it. Look at that. Get the idea. All right, so there's the slipper. I'm gonna get it back on, and this is the thing I'd probably be fragile. It, it, I would be careful with because it looks like it's pretty fragile. I don't know if it's made out of porcelain or plastic. Can't tell, but maybe plastic. But so I'm gonna be really gentle with this. You know, it should come on pretty easy. Not too difficult. Actually, I don't even know if I want to pound. I might just want to press it on, but I could probably just pound it or hit it with a hammer. Alright, so you want to pound those into where those, those little notches go into that little area right there. That's actually what helps prevent it from spinning around on itself. Alright, I'm going to wrap these around. Be careful not to jack these up. I'm not trying to do this with the camera, so it's going to wrap around. I guess my pliers do it. Alright, so time to solder these up. The main thing is you don't want this copper touch any part of this anything except for these contacts here here and here I have the copper touching the metal anywhere now I have this thing soldered up and the bearing back on just a matter of pounding that thing on with this dead little hammer here all right get it back together This will just go straight on top of that. All right, so this should go actually a little bit easier now that I cleaned this up and got rid of all a lot of that corrosion. So, all right, here we go. Alright, so those are 8 mils. Get that torque down. Not super tight, but not loose either. The main thing is to make sure the bearing doesn't, that thing doesn't bind up. Alright, got that little harness part back on. And this is the new module. So, actually, I do actually have a real Motocraft branded module. 
but I'll give this a shot. See that little pin right there? That little pin is holding back these little brushes right here. So as soon as I actually pull that pin out, it releases the brushes like that. See the hole right there? That's actually what that metal thing is going into. Look at that. All right. All right. So when Torx. Torx size on that is a T20. Okay. Get it going. All right, there it is. So if you guys are wondering, I haven't gone into the 175 amp mega fuse right there. So I've got that back on. This actually is a Marine. Uh, I get a lot of stuff down my uh, local West Marine. Get that. Get that power in there. Okay, well, I can't do that with the camera, but get that on there correctly and uh, fire this up, see if it works. All right, let's turn this power on. It's a holy HP system, I've done some other videos. Fuel injection, so that's 12.4 volts, 12.3. Alright, looking good. 14 volts. Cool, back in business. <laughs>